left off was why do we find inside the Mishkan the Indian of 515 when it's really not supposed to happen until the time of the future, right? The Geula is in the third base of Mikdash Dafka is connected with the Kesser coming down into the Yud K, etc. Why do we find that already inside of the Mishkan? So we said everything that in the Mishkan was in a, a way of Helam. It didn't come out yet. And it was already built into the, to the Mishkan. But we had to go through the Avoda of the Tachton. We had to unearth the Avoda of the Tachton in order to allow that what the Mishkan contained in uh, potential to come out in actuality. Meaning what? So long as there hadn't yet been the Gezerah of the spies, right? There also, remember, we, 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 we figured out that it was also the Gezerah of the build. Really, it was the Gezerah of the building of the base of Mitesh. It was a Gezerah of Tov. Because inside of the Gezerah of the destruction, was that you had to get rid of the first and second base of Mikdash in order to allow the third one to be built. And that really Tisha of contains the day of the birth of Mashiach. Right? And even before Hashem destroyed the building, He only destroyed it in order to, to build the third one. And therefore, in Tisha B'Av itself, in this, in this day, was already contained the building of the base of Mikdash. But what? It was Behelam. Right? So too, to bring it out of its... So, so it also was Behelam inside of the, of the Mishkan. Because the whole day of Tisha B'Av didn't even happen yet by the time the Mishkan was there. So therefore, even though it was in the Mishkan, it was only Behelam in the Mishkan. And the idea of getting to Tisha was to bring it out of its helm into Gilui. That's sort of what we left off with. We're going to basically wrap it up and start another mimer. So this is the last os. Os vav. Zion. Just one thing I want yeah. to... I, I, I know this is harsh, it's vayaschana. So it's like, it's a mukh to the, you know, chamisha so vav, yeah. the whole thing. This, uh, this Indian falls out in, in this week's parsha, right? This, this Friday is going to be chamisha yeah. so so it's vayaschana. Absolutely. Which is interesting because actually in that in that uh, the Myra Makomos where he brings the Tzemach Tzedek over there and he brings I told you he brings four or five six different Veschanan. examples of five hundred. He doesn't bring Veschanan over there at all. So it's like basically <laughs> there he brings that out over here. I, where where does it uh, come from there? Um, he says Kiyadua. It's just known. Anyway. Um, yeah. All right, so let's wrap it up. O Zion. V'zeru shebechamisha sarba'av hayu benos Yerushalayim v'yeish gorsin benos Yisrael yotzos v'chulos b'karami. Right? They were the the 15th of the Av, the daughters of Jerusalem. Some people say the daughters of Israel would go out dancing in the vineyards. Shemachol d'chamisha sarba'av that this dance of the 15th of Av was like the dance of the future to come. Right? It's a mouthful. But it says that in the future, it says Hashem is going to come and do it uh, and basically make a dance for the tzaddikim and everyone's going to point with their finger and say, behold, this is our God that we waited for Him and, uh, and, and He saved us. This is the God that we waited for. We're going to rejoice and uh, be happy in His salvation. So this is basically waiting to happen, this dance. And it's not coincidental that there's a dance that, go, that goes on that the daughters of Jerusalem would do on the 15th of Av. This basically they were doing the dance of the Geula. Because as we said, uh, uh, something me'ain, the Geula, something of the Geula, the, this 515 light, the Kesser and the elevation of the Yud it all shines into the world once a year uh, on the 15th of Av. So they already did the dance, so, so to speak. So we should do the dance as well. We get see us Mitzrayim, Amru. Now, going back to this passage that they're going to say, when they, when they did, the tzaddikim will do this dance, is, Elokeinu zekivinu lo v'yoshienu. Right? So Hashem, this our God, that we waited for Him. So it says, Zeh. And then, Zeh Hashem kivinu lo. Then it says again, this is Hashem that we waited for Him. So it says two times Zeh, in the Pasuk going on the future. When it comes to Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, it's, they said, Zeh pam achas. They only said the word Zeh one time. As they were walking out of the Yam, they said, This is my God and I will glorify Him. 
Lasi lavo yom rishnei pamim zeh. In the future, they're going to say, as we just quoted, zeh twice. There's a pasuk of the gula that says zeh two times. He elokenu zeh zeh Hashem. Right. So it says two times. Beitzias mitzrayim shayu az medregas tzadikim amnu zerak pamachas. Right. So when they came out of mitzrayim, they were called tzadikim. As we said before, the moment they left mitzrayim, they were like a child that was just born, who had no sort of real relationship to his past. Therefore, they were all perfect. They were only, therefore, a, a perfect tzaddik can only say zeh once. Why? Giloi havaya deza. Right? Because we're saying that this is what's called the, the revelation of, of one level of havaya. The havaya that exists in za, in the, in the midos. Lasi labo shiyo madregas bali tshuva. In the future, we're going to reach the level of bali tshuva. And as we know, tshuva is kaflaim l'tushia. And by tshuva, it says it's a, the, it's a double measure of salvation. Yomnu ze, yomnu shnei pamim ze. They're going to say, then they're going to get to the level of ze two times. What does ze refer to? Not only the giloy of havaya in za, but also the giloy of havaya in atik. In other words, it's called, what's called havaya de sata and havaya de la'ela. Two levels of havaya. And in general, we were saying before that all throughout the, the theme of of the 15th of Av, the, the whole time we've been saying that unless you basically arrive at the Tachton and you and you you have the the, the fall of Tisha B'Av, you have this sort of descent, then you cannot really truly fuse high and low together. The fusion of high and low together comes from a level of Keser or Atik, and that's not able to come out and present itself unless the, the low thing has presented itself first. So there has to be this fall. Right, and there because the, 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 the elevation comes from tshuva as opposed to from being a tzaddik. When you're when you're doing a tzaddik move, you're not able to elevate the lowest parts of the world because you don't have access to the lowest parts of the world. The Baal tshuva who falls, he can then show that godliness is in the lowest places. He can fuse the high to the low. This is a keser, and therefore the first level of uh, avoda that we did in this world, you see, as mitzrayim, we were tzaddikim. We didn't really yet unearth the tachtum. So only in the future. We'll do tshuva, we'll unearth the tachtun, we'll say zeh pa'amayim, two times zeh, which is really, it re- represents two times the level of havaya. Okay, does anyone have any questions about this? It's kind of like a summary at the end here. I actually do. Yeah. But, uh, it says by, um, by the Kriyas Yamsuf, matitzak elai, batik etal yemilsa. It's understood from that that uh, should be shaykh to the high level of havaya. Right. Not just, uh, in our, uh, so it says that basically there was a there was a present there was some a presentation of of, of atik, but it wasn't it was just a ha'ara of it. it didn't it didn't it, it didn't last forever. So also by Matan Torah basically they had they reached the shara nun, and they they had the Indian of you know pasku zuamasan they like they went back to sort of the level of of the of Gan Eden, right? But because it was temporary. Right, so that shows that it wasn't the ultimate level of, of uh, of atik. It was just like a ray of atik. Because what's the whole Indian of atik, is that it represents nitzchius, eternality. So so the fact is they had to have, in order even even in order, remember we spoke about it before that that uh, the whole notion of melech uh, l'sadeh ne'avad, right? That. You, when the Sadeh is Ne'avad, i.e. they do the Avodos of Karbanos in the Beis Amitesh, you do get to the Melech. And it's l- completely Lamai Le Misei Right? Because in order, cause, cause that's what uh, the union of the Stam Sadeh is already Gan Eden. The Avodah of the Sadeh, remember we said, is bringing the Sadeh down into the world. And so we said the Beis Amitesh was Pashit uniting heaven and earth. And therefore, you can only do that if you access the Keser, which is called the Melech Ilah. But Lagabe, what's coming later, we said, even though that's above the Seder Hishtalshus, Lagabe, what's coming later, it's considered part of the Hishtalshus. So it is an Indian of Atik, it's an Indian of Kester, but since it doesn't stay forever, so it's not the ultimate level of Atik, basically. It's a, it's a temporary. Just like the Beis Amikdash was this Indian, but the fact that it could be destroyed already shows that it was just a Ha'ara of that, because the, the real level of it is, is something which can't be destroyed. So it wasn't in the Atik, <coughs> You could say it was Chetzoni Satik. Definitely a, some level lacking, which made it that it was, the whole thing was considered like 
something connected with the Ishtal Shluz. Even though in a normal conversation we would say that it's much, much higher than the Seder Ishtal Shluz, um, compared to what's coming in the future, it's considered like the Seder Ishtal Shluz. So I guess you could say the same thing. It's Atik, but there's Atik and there's Atik. And there's <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, Mam Sheikh Bakasov, Nagila Venis Machab Yeshua. So the verse of the future ends with the words, We will sing and rejoice in his salvation. In other words, it doesn't mean we will sing in uh, that he saved us. In his salvation means like he saved us. But rather, it's his salvation. He was saved. Yeshua so. That Kadosh Baruch Hu is Zeh Hasheni. Now that this Zeh Hasheni has come out, which is the second level of Zeh, which is really the second level of Havaya, which is Atik. Penimius Atik, he says, talk over here. The Kiyadua Shalasi Labu Yagam Agila do Penimius Atik. So there you go. That's the difference. Atik versus Penimius Atik. So that's called Yeshua So. In other words, that level has never been seen. It's the ultimate purpose of everything. And yet, that level has never been seen. We said, kind of a, just to, if we're already finishing the mimer, let's just do a little quick review on this. We said that there's, there is two sort of levels of the kavana of the Bria. There is the kavana of the Bria, the intention that Hashem had for the creation, the high hopes Hashem had for the creation, from the perspective of the light. In other words, that inside of His essence, there's also the, what's called the essence of the light. Right? And at that state of Giloim, Hashem sort of brought to bear the intention of what the world could achieve. And he brought out the world and he sat there with the neshamas. He sat with all the holy souls of the tzaddikim, which is basically Am Yisrael. And he said, should we make the world? And if we do make the world, there's going to be a gift and a reward. And what is the reward going to be? You're going to access the essence of the light. In other words, here we're sitting in sort of the Urain Sof, which is beyond the world, discussing whether or not we should go down and make a world. Do you, if you agree, I'll give you your reward, which is the essence of the light inside of the essence. And that's what you'll achieve with your work, right? And so we said that that, therefore, was not such a chiddish to the Bria because they knew they were going to get it. Whereas when we fell, we did tshuva. And we wound up um, basically arriving at something which was not even in store for the world to receive because now that we did tshuva, we were able to go up beyond the essence of the light and reach to the actual essence itself. So it was, so to speak, a chiddish, what the world was, God and the Jewish people, everybody was not expecting us to fall so low and therefore they weren't expecting us to go so high. You call this? We got confused with the chairman, right? You with me here? So then we said, we're, therefore, that's the big chiddish and that's what we call Yeshua So, Hashem's salvation. In other words, he was, he's saved. He wasn't even expecting that to come out. And we said, in reality, there was a kavana for that to happen, but it wasn't the kavana of the light. It was the kavana of the essence. Like this is ultimately like the essence's inner desire, if you could say such a thing, right? Is that he wants his very essence to be revealed, to be brought out and to be shown. And this is what it means, Yeshua So. His salvation, right? like Mamish his, that openly is this deepest inner dream of the essence is that the very essence could be expressed somehow, which is like sort of an impossibility, and it can only happen when the Yidin do tshuva. So this is what we're saying now, that this is really what it means that in the future we're going to say, we're going to sing for Hashem's salvation. How, do, how does that uh, refer to on Haftalah when you say that also Yeshua? Too. Yeshua, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeshua C, we say. Right. So he says that in the next line, actually. Oh. It's a good call. So just let's finish it then. That all these things should happen soon. Right? Just like we just said yesterday in the Haftorah of Tisha B'Av, that soon Yeshua Si, right, will come. This is the same thing. Yeshua Si, my save, my salvation will come. She Yeshua see the Kadosh Baruch It refers to my salvation of God's salvation. Same idea, right? Ha Yeshua Shalei Neamar Negil Venis Macham Yeshua. So that same salvation that we were saying we will rejoice in His salvation. That's also what it means. Karova Yeshua see Lavo. Soon Hashem is saying my salvation will come. Hashem is talking to him to Himself, and you could basically say the same thing. Kel Yeshua see right. 
Um, okay. And this is what it says. He karov alavov karov mamish. Ubagalo didan amen ken yiratzon. Amen. Okay, so that was a, a good hefty couple weeks of work. I'm going to close the book on that one. And uh, we're going to start a new mind with.